For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. The Siberian wilderness is a massive frozen land where beauty and danger exist in harmonious and awe-inspiring contrast. In its vast expanses, you'll encounter a pristine, untamed beauty that stretches as far as the eye can see. Yet within this breathtaking expanse lies a formidable and unforgiving force. The Siberian wilderness is as treacherous as it is beautiful, offering a slim chance of survival. Please click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. The Siberian tundra is a vast and frigid biome that spans the northern reaches of Siberia, Russia, located to the east of the Ural Mountains, northward to the Arctic Ocean, and west to the Pacific Ocean in the east. The climate in the Siberian tundra is exceptionally harsh, characterized by long, severe winters with temperatures that can plummet well below freezing. Summers are short and cool. The region experiences a phenomenon known as permafrost, where the ground remains frozen year-round, except for the top layer during the brief summer months. Siberia, a land of breathtaking beauty and formidable danger, embodies the essence of untamed wilderness. In its vast expanses, you'll witness nature's masterpiece, where endless forests, majestic mountains, and boundless tundras stretch as far as the eye can behold. The Siberian landscape, cloaked in a serene blanket of snow or adorned with the vibrant hues of its brief summers, speaks of a pristine and untouched world that defies imagination. Yet amid this awe-inspiring beauty lies a powerful adversary, Siberia's harsh winters with temperatures that can plummet to life-threatening lows challenge the very essence of human resilience. The unforgiving wilderness, with its biting winds and frozen rivers, demands unwavering courage from those who dare to traverse its domain. As you journey through this land of contrasts, you'll discover the danger that lurks around each corner. Siberia, with its treacherous depths and boundless horizons, is a place where survival necessitates resourcefulness. Siberia's beauty and danger are one of nature's most formidable challenges. For Vito Glinksy, his Siberian expedition would be the ultimate test of survival. As a teenager residing in the Polish border town of Glabokia, Vito Glinsky and his family experienced a grim turn of fate when the invading Russians apprehended them in 1939, who at that time were allies of Nazi Germany. This unfortunate encounter led to their separation from his parents, and Vitold found himself incarcerated in Moscow's infamous Lubyanka prison at the tender age of 17. He received a harsh sentence of 25 years of grueling labor, joining the ranks of approximately one and a half million Poles who were forcibly sent to Siberia. This sentence amounted to what seemed like a death sentence, leaving him with two choices, to await an inevitable demise or to seize the slim opportunity for escape. From the moment he arrived at his Siberian gulag, shackled and in chains, Vitold began meticulously formulating an escape plan. He was acutely aware that failure to escape would result in certain death. To increase his chances of success, Vitold took on the role of a lumberjack and secretly etched signs into the trees, covertly pointing the way to the south and the promise of freedom. During this time, fate smiled upon him as he struck up an unlikely friendship with the camp commandant's wife. She asked me to fix her radio. She rewarded me with sweet tea and a slice of bread. But the best thing was that above a desk, there was a map of Asia, Vitold recalls. With these pieces falling into place, Vitold's daring plan began to take shape. The Commandant's wife, aware of his intentions, offered valuable advice, suggesting that he procure suitable clothing and sturdy footwear. She provided him with a parcel containing dried meat, new shoes, hand-knitted socks, and long underwear essential supplies for the perilous journey ahead. The pivotal moment for Vitold and his companions came during a stormy night in the midst of a blizzard. They seized the opportunity presented by the chaos and confusion wrought by the severe weather, making a daring escape from the prison. Vitold, armed only with a haversack fashioned from a blanket tied at its corners, crawled beneath the wire that encircled the prison. To his astonishment, six men silently followed him. They were coming out of nowhere, like cockroaches in a bakery. I told them, we'll walk for 20 hours a day, is that agreed? If they didn't like it, they could sit down and wait for the Russians, Glinsky said. 
With patrols hampered by the inclement weather, the group took advantage of the treacherous conditions. No guards or animals would dare step outside in such conditions, except for these prisoners who preferred the risk of death to the prospect of enduring years within the harsh Siberian gulag. Their immediate objective was clear, escape Russia and reach the border, situated 1,600 miles or 2,500 kilometers away to the south. Their journey would take them through the Siberian tundra, south through Lake Baikal, one of the world's largest freshwater lakes. Further south, they would need to traverse Mongolia and the treacherous Gobi Desert. Further south through China, they will have to trek through the highest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas, to reach the freedom of British-controlled India, an almost impossible expedition of more than 4,000 miles or 6,500 kilometers on foot through diverse terrain and climates. But Vitold took charge of the group, forging a path through the forest with one man leading and two following behind to erase their footprints with pine branches. However, trust was scarce among the escapees. Their relationship was defined by silent suspicion rather than camaraderie. Among them was Smith, a mysterious American who had been employed as an engineer in Moscow before his arrest. Batko, a Ukrainian fugitive wanted for murder in his homeland. Zaro, the owner of a cafe from Yugoslavia and several Polish soldiers. As the challenges of survival escalated, they would need to depend on each other for support. Vitold's rural upbringing proved invaluable. His knowledge of edible plants, fungi, fishing, and animal trapping became vital for the group's sustenance. In the unforgiving Siberian wilderness, Vitold's leadership and survival skills would be their greatest assets. As the group ventured further into the desolate wilderness of Siberia, they found themselves grappling with the unforgiving Siberian winter. They endured bone-chilling temperatures, relentless snowstorms, and a scarcity of food. Their struggle to secure sustenance and remain warm was compounded by the constant threat of discovery by Soviet authorities who were poised to launch a pursuit. Navigating the expansive Siberian wilderness presented the escapees with numerous formidable challenges due to its treacherous terrain. As they pressed forward, the emotional toll of their escape weighed heavily on Vitold Glinsky. The uncertainty of their situation and the ever-present risks of recapture cultivated a constant sense of vigilance among the group members. With their limited supplies dwindling, securing food became a top priority for the group's survival. They relied on their survival skills to hunt small game, fish for sustenance, and gather edible plants. Vitold's knowledge of the natural world proved invaluable, guiding them in distinguishing between safe and harmful flora and fauna. In their resourcefulness, they also learned to utilize the land's resources, crafting makeshift shelters to shield themselves from the elements. By sheer luck, they stumbled upon a deer trapped in a ravine, providing them with a much-needed source of sustenance. They feasted on the deer for several days and, and utilized pieces of its hide to repair their worn felt prison boots. Throughout their journey, the group encountered indigenous people living within the wilderness, often resulting in tense and uncertain interactions. Navigating these encounters delicately was paramount, as the native inhabitants represented both potential sources of assistance and potential threats. The escapees faced constant threats from the formidable wildlife of Siberia, including wolves and bears. Despite the harsh conditions and losses they endured, the bonds among the group members continued to strengthen with each passing day. They shared personal stories, dreams of returning home, and their deepest fears, finding solace in these conversations that provided companionship and a lifeline of hope in the face of adversity. As they journeyed through the Siberian wilderness, the group honed their survival skills, becoming proficient at hunting, fishing, and foraging for food. They also mastered the art of constructing makeshift shelters and clothing from whatever materials they could find, vital skills that sustained them in the harsh environment. Despite the seemingly insurmountable odds, the group clung to the hope of attaining freedom. Their unwavering camaraderie and shared determination served as the driving force that propelled them forward even when the obstacles appeared overwhelming. Days before reaching the border with China, their path intersected with that of 18-year-old Kristina Polansk, 
a terrified Polish girl who had escaped barefoot through the forest after the Russians had killed her family. Her condition was dire, as gangrene had set in on her foot. She was very lonely and distressed, and when I inspected her foot, I knew straight away she had gangrene, Witold said. I didn't want to be saddled with a sick girl, but what could we do? Though hesitant at first, the group decided to provide her with aid, crafting moccasins from the remaining deerskin and fashioning a stretcher of poles and dry grass to transport her. Tragically, Christina's condition deteriorated rapidly, culminating in her passing. It was terrible to watch, Witold recalls. She was buried in a shallow trench, her body covered with stones. Finally, the men reached their first significant milestone, Lake Baikal. This lake would provide much needed sustenance and was the first indication that they were headed on the right path. The Mongolian border was not far away. Their journey took them through diverse landscapes, from the dense Siberian taiga with its vast forests, frozen rivers, and the constant threat of wildlife, to the open Mongolian plains, where they encountered nomadic herders and learned valuable insights about the terrain and local customs. However, their most formidable test awaited them in the sweltering temperatures of the Gobi Desert, where they endured scorching days and freezing nights, all while contending with debilitating dust storms. Desperation drove the men to seek sustenance wherever they could find it. Snakes became a steady part of their diet, hunted with their walking sticks fashioned into prongs. You would stab the fork down to catch the snake, then cut off its head. It would continue to wriggle for hours. Then we cut a ring around the body and peeled off the skin, rubbing sand on our hands to get a better grip. Next, you had to take out the spinal cord carefully because it's poisonous, chop the body into pieces and boil it. We couldn't bring ourselves to eat snake until finally we had to, Glinksy recalls. The ordeal took a psychological toll, and they ate snakes only when it became a dire necessity. The harrowing journey claimed the lives of two of the Polish soldiers, their health deteriorating until they displayed symptoms of scurvy. They walked more slowly, their legs swelling, and they could even pull out their teeth with their fingers. Ultimately, they succumbed on the same day, side by side, just as they had always walked together. Their graves marked a poignant moment of loss and hardship on the journey to freedom. Despite the impossible odds of crossing the Gobi Desert, most of the men survived and freedom seemed to be well in their grasp. As the escapees journeyed southward, they gradually found themselves entering the foothills of the formidable Himalayas. These towering mountains served as both a physical obstacle and a symbol of hope, signifying that reaching the other side of this great mountain range would bring them closer to safety. However, the ascent into the Himalayas posed a daunting challenge for the group due to the punishing effects of high altitude and the bitter cold that enveloped the highest mountain range in the world. Altitude sickness took its toll, resulting in symptoms like dizziness, fatigue, and shortness of breath, further intensifying the already grueling trek. During their crossing of the Himalayas, cooperation and mutual reliance among the group members became paramount. They had to assist one another in navigating steep slopes and treacherous terrain, reinforcing the strong bonds that had developed throughout their remarkable journey. Along their route through Tibet and the Himalayas, they reciprocated help by working on local farms in exchange for food and shelter. However, tragedy struck as another of the Polish soldiers perished, losing his footing on a crumbling ledge. After enduring the Himalayan challenges, including Witold's declining health, they began their descent from the mountains, setting foot in British-controlled India. On a dusty track, a military vehicle approached, carrying uniformed men armed with imposing knives. Initially, Witold feared the worst. I thought to myself, this is the end. Then I realized these men were well-dressed, well-disciplined, definitely not Russians, Witold said. In fact, they were Gurkhas, soldiers from Nepal, who were recruited into the British Army. They greeted the escapees with a very British welcome, offering a jug of tea and a plate of cucumber sandwiches. Their arduous journey had reached its conclusion, and they had finally reached safety. The escape, which had spanned frozen forests, towering mountains, and scorching deserts over the course of 11 months, initially undertaken by seven men in February 1941, had only four survivors who reached safety at a British base across the Indian border in January 1942. 
Witold's remarkable tale encompassed, enduring the Siberian winter's deep freeze, the Himalayas' thin air, and the stifling heat of the Gobi Desert. It also involved learning to live off the land, battling disease, and navigating the complexities of interactions with hostile tribes of nomads in China and Mongolia. However, Witold's war did not end there. Upon arriving in Britain, he enlisted with the Polish forces, participating in the D-Day campaign and sustaining injuries from shrapnel. After his military service, he transitioned to civilian life, marrying and becoming a construction worker involved in projects such as building the M5 and M50 motorways. In retirement, he settled into a quiet life in a bungalow, keeping his wartime memories to himself. In 1956, a book titled The Long Walk emerged claiming to recount the journey of seven prisoners who escaped from a Siberian labor camp and walked to India. Strikingly, this story closely mirrored Witold's own experiences. It became an international bestseller and became the basis for a major motion picture. The author of the book, Slavomir Rawitz, a former Polish officer, passed away in 2006. Subsequently, a BBC radio documentary uncovered evidence suggesting that Rawitz's account was a fabrication. As military records showed he served in Iran during the time of the escape, it became apparent that Rawich had likely read Witold's genuine account in official papers found at the Polish embassy in London during the war, effectively appropriating his story. Despite knowing that his story had been stolen, Witold chose not to protest, as he aimed to leave the war behind and focus on his new life. However, fate intervened when writer John Dyson discovered Witold's remarkable history and persuaded him to revisit his past. Even Witold's wife of 59 years, Joyce, had never heard the complete account until this point. In 2009, he painstakingly retraced the long walk, recounting the harrowing details. Witold passed away in April 2013 at the age of 97 having waited more than 50 years to reveal the truth behind one of the most incredible escape stories of all time. Surviving in the Siberian tundra of similar terrain with its harsh climate and vast, unforgiving landscape is an immense challenge. If you find yourself lost in this remote wilderness, panic is your worst enemy. Take a deep breath and calm your mind. Assess your situation and prioritize your needs. Unless you are absolutely sure about the direction to safety or need to escape enemy forces, it's often safer to stay where you are. Moving aimlessly can lead to further disorientation and exhaustion. If you decide to travel, do so during daylight hours and stick to easily identifiable landmarks like rivers or ridges. Leave markers so you can trace your path back if necessary. Protect yourself from the elements by creating shelter. If you have a tarp or space blanket, use it to construct a simple lean-to or A-frame shelter. Insulate the ground with pine branches or moss to prevent heat loss. Hypothermia is a significant risk in a Siberia-type climate. Insulate your clothing by adding layers and keep your body heat in by wearing a hat and gloves. If you have a fire starting tool, build a fire for warmth. Snow and ice can be sources of water, but they need to be melted first. Use your body heat or a fire to melt snow or ice and be sure to purify it before drinking. Boiling is the safest method. While finding food in the tundra is challenging, Look for edible plants like lichen and moss. If you have traps or snares, use them to catch small game. Fishing in rivers and lakes can also be an option. If you have a map and compass, use them to determine your location and the direction to safety. Even basic navigation skills can be invaluable. Dehydration is a risk even in cold climates. Conserve your body's moisture by minimizing physical exertion and avoiding alcohol or caffeine, which can dehydrate you. Maintaining a positive mental attitude is crucial. Focus on your immediate needs and tasks and stay hopeful. Mental resilience can make a significant difference in survival situations. Keep a lookout for aircraft or other potential rescuers. Create large signals on the ground such as an X or help written in the snow that can be spotted from the air. Remember that the frozen tundra is an extreme environment and surviving in it may require specialized knowledge and skills. Whenever venturing into such remote and challenging regions, it's advisable to have proper training equipment and ideally a companion who can assist in emergency situations. Important tips so you can make it through an outdoor disaster.